Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to use a couple new HTML5 elements, um, the figure element and the figure caption, or fig caption elements. And uh, they're kind of neat, but they don't really do anything too different than what we've done in the past. They're just a little bit more descriptive. So I've got a blank page set up here, got the doc type definition for HTML5, head section with title, opening and closing title tags, character encoding meta, author meta, and I've got some, I'm set up for some internal styles, which I will do in just a moment. The body of my page is blank, so let me go ahead and create something here. I think I will use the article element. So article is one of the new HTML5 tags, and really it's simply, it's a more descriptive div. We're still using div tags, um, but there's a few new block elements like nav and uh, article, figure, fig caption, which can be used to provide more descriptive situations. So I've got a set of article tags, and within my article, I'm going to have a figure, which is going to be an image basically. And I'm going to do opening and closing figure tags, okay? And then also in my article, I'll probably have a number of paragraphs. To make it a little bit more realistic so we can see some text, I really would like to have some text in there. I'm going to jump over to my browser real quick. Where is it at? There's my browser. I'm using the Rockmelt browser. And let me just do a quick search for lorem ipsum. I always misspell it there. I just want to get the, uh, the generator. And let's see, I will have, how about three paragraphs, generate it. There's some lorem ipsum text for me. Let's go ahead and copy that, jump back over to my editor. Give myself my first paragraph, paste. There we go. Another paragraph. Close it another paragraph. Excellent. So now I have three paragraphs of text all inside of my article. And if I save this, and let's go and just check this out real quick over in my browser. Refresh. There we go. So there's my three paragraphs of text. Now for the figure that I'm going to use, um, I went and grabbed a picture, by the way, off of Flickr. So let me show you this. It's really kind of neat. So I'm going to use this picture of this woman here in the yellow scarf. And I got this through uh, Flickr Creative Commons, and that's something we'll do. We'll insert this image into the web page, and then using the fig caption, we'll make sure we give credit to the owner of the image there. So, because they're going to, they want to get an attribution license. So, let's take care of that. Jump back over to my editor, and in the figure, I'm going to go ahead and insert the image. And the image that I'm using is woman yellow scarf jpg alt equals. And I'll just put in woman wearing a yellow scarf as my alternate text. So that was pretty easy. And if I save this, go back to my browser and refresh, there we go. The image is showing up on top of the paragraph. Make a mental note of that. We're going to correct that soon enough. But that's, that's the way it works. Um, the images, the figure, by the way, is a block element. Okay. And I'll point that out again in just a second. And block elements separate themselves on surrounding content. So my figure block element is going to want to take up the full width available to it. So that's what's going on there. So we've got that part in there. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to put a figure caption in. And I think I will put it inside of the figure element. So there's fig caption opening and closing set of fig captions. And for this, I'm going to do an href, and I'm going to grab that value in just a second, and then a closing anchor tag there. So I'm going to have a figure caption in here. And for the information that I want, I'll jump back over. And let's see, I'm getting this picture from here. So let me just get this username, copy, and I'll type in from Flickr user paste that right in there. And in fact, I think I'll change this. So the anchor is just over the user's name. And let's see, let me just go ahead and copy the link address and paste. So that way we have credit right in there to the user. So how is this looking? So back over to my page, refresh. Excellent. So I've got the picture of the woman followed by the attribute, the, um, the byline basically to the original user and if I click on that that is going to be a link to their page.
Super. So things are going along pretty well, and the HTML side of things is actually is actually done. So I've got the figure, which contains the actual image and the figure caption. And my figure caption simply contains text and a hyperlink related to the image. These are new elements, but they're not necessarily so critical. You could have done everything we're doing right now. Instead of figure, use div. Instead of fig caption, use div, or even paragraph. Paragraph would have worked fine there also. But now it's a little bit more descriptive. Let me head up to my internal styles and start to put some things on here so we can visualize this a bit better. I'm going to create a rule for my figure element. And just so you, it's, it's very clear, I'm going to change the uh, background color. And I'm going to do a really light gray. I just want to kind of point this out to you first and uh, refresh. And you see how this light gray is taking up the full width of my page. Once again, that's a sign that the figure element is a block element. So I'm going to adjust the width of that. So I'm going to say the width. And I can't actually, I don't remember the width of the image that I got. But um, I want to say, of course, I can look this up locally. Um, yeah, I think I got this one here, the 331. So basically, if I set the width of my figure to, I'll start off with 350 pixels, it should just be a bit wider than the image. Let me jump back over here and refresh. There we go. So it's just a little bit wider. Okay, and so this stands out a little bit more. I'm going to make it a slightly darker gray. Okay, so now that's a little bit wider. And we'll reposition the image in just a moment, but there's my text inside of that. Make the text a little bit lighter. Excellent. Okay, now here's what I want to do. Now that my figure is actually narrower than the page, I'm going to float it over to the right. So I'm going to float that entire figure element over to the right. And by doing this, my text is going to just wrap right around it. So that's pretty slick there. And if my if I had a little bit more text, it would actually start to wrap underneath. And I think we can do that pretty soon here. What if I simply take my figure and instead of 350 pixels wide, I made it 250 pixels wide. And when I do something like that, Notice my image is now bigger, bigger than the figure container. Okay, so I'm going to create another CSS rule up here. The image in the figure, and I'm going to set the width of that image to 90%, um, and that'll be 90% of its parent container. And for the figure, I'm going to do text align center to center the contents of the figure container, and the image is going to be 90% of the figure container width. So when I refresh this, now we can start to see that particular size. Still not quite small enough for my text to start wrapping, but it would have soon enough. And I just I do want you to see that. So let me just change this to 200 real quick. So, so now that you can see the text would start to wrap underneath the image. So I've got the photo, got the text on there. And let me go and clean up my text a little bit. Um, I'm just going to do a break tag, which will force a break to a new line. Excellent. So now I've got the figure and let me put a little padding on this. And there's the illusions complete. So so now I'm using the figure element and the fig caption element to display a picture with text wrapping around it in my web page.